All right, guys, at long last, it's time for Project Big Ben update, which really is not Project Big Ben anymore. I guess it's kind of Project Swole Ben? Project slightly smaller Ben, but more ripped? Basically, it's meat prep. It's not meat prep, it's show prep, guys. It's show prep. For the first time, I will be stepping on the bodybuilding stage. Um, my first show is in five and a half weeks. It will be the Jay Cutler Classic in Richmond, Virginia on August 10th. And assuming that goes well, assuming I place top two in my height class, I'll be going on to North Americans uh, at the end of the month. I believe the date is August 28th or 29th, and that's in Pittsburgh. My goal for North Americans is just to get that national level experience. My goal for the Jake Cutler, I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to be to win uh, win my height class for the for the classic physique division, which is height class B. That's the 5'7 to 5'9 guys. So... I'm really excited. Things are going fucking fantastic. Thanks to John, John Meadows, my, my coach, my mentor. And, you know, I really have no complaints right now. This is, let, let's be real. This is the point, right? About five, six weeks out. This is where I'm always feeling the best for powerlifting too. And then things get derailed. So I'm not losing my focus. I'm not sitting back on my ass. I'm staying in the zone, taking it one meal at a time. That was John's biggest advice for me, man. He was a focus hour to hour on what you need to do to improve, whether it's the next meal, whether it's the cardio session, whether it's the training session, whether it's going to bed, just one step at a time to improve. And as long as you just keep knocking that out, you'll get there. So that's what we've been doing. Things have been going fantastic. I do want to break down some of the things that I'm doing and talk to you guys about it so you can kind of get a feel for, for what goes into to meat prep and or show prep rather and all that stuff. It's going to take me a while to break that habit. So let's start out with training. If you guys don't already know, I'm following a modified version of Creeping Death 2. This is John's favorite pre-contest program. I'm modifying it to choose exercises that fit my body a little bit better than I know from my experience in powerlifting. I'm also modifying it to make it, I'll be honest with you guys, a little bit more intense because I feel like I can handle that. So I've cleared all this with John. Uh, the program will be available at the end of the show when, when this is all over. I'm planning on making an eight-week program. It's going to be a real nice mix. If you guys have been following John, between Creeping Death, his last three programs, right? Creeping Death Two, Odin Force, and Project Colossus. All right, it's it's borrowing a little bit from all those uh, in terms of six days a week, increasing volume, but then also using a lot of intensification methods, things like drop sets, partials, force reps, all that good stuff. It's really, really kicking my ass, and I love it. I'm really finally learning. You know, the difference between bodybuilding training and powerlifting training, and the biggest difference for me so far has been the accumulation of volume. Now, when I talk about this with regard to strength training, when I'm talking about accumulation of volume, I'm usually talking about you know, within a single training session, right? You're trying to increase the volume from week to week. But I found that with bodybuilding, really what you have to look at is your microcycle volume. By microcycle, let's just say your weekly training volume, right? That actually ends up kicking your ass because you might feel great after your day off, but by the time, you know, day four or five and you've been training every day in a row, by the time day four or five rolls around, you're really, really hurting. And so you have to kind of account for that and pace yourself a lot better than you do in powerlifting where you just kind of go balls out and then rest until you're ready to go balls out again. Um, I feel like this method is much more sustainable. I feel like I have zero injuries, zero joint pains. It's, it's, that is the best part, the best part. I'm sleeping better, my stress is lower, all because you know I'm not going to the absolute brink on every training session. I'm building up, building up towards this final thing. And honestly, I feel like maybe had I applied that philosophy to my powerlifting training, I would have done a little bit better, but that's something to save for the future. So that's the big thing about training. A couple other points I want to touch on. I have found that using my warm-ups effectively has been an incredible training tool. So, you know, instead of saying, okay, let's warm up with a couple sets of 8 to 12, I'm saying, okay, I start with a super lightweight, crank out 20, up the weight a little bit, zero rest, crank out another 20, up the weight again. Now maybe you only get 15, keep going, no rest, 12, 10. Then by the time you get to your working weight, then you take your two or three minutes rest so you're ready to go. You've accumulated all this volume. You've gotten the blood pumping. You've gotten the sweat going. You've got to be in the zone to crank out all those reps with good form and no rest. So then you're really ready to go. You're dialed in, and that's been working phenomenal for me. Phenomenal. And then the third thing I want to mention, let's see. We, so we've touched on 
uh, accumulation of volume throughout a microcycle. We've talked about using your warm-ups more effectively. Um, the third thing I want to talk about is posing, which I'm considering part of my training. I am posing, guys, swear to God, a minimum of an hour a day. Posing is so fucking complicated, and I love it because that's the closest thing to powerlifting so far. I have found that the most minute differences in how you pose make an enormous difference in how you look, and it's very similar to powerlifting, how a minute difference in your training technique makes an enormous difference in how much weight you can lift, right? A little bit of nuance in your spinal position is going to have a huge impact on your bracing and therefore your stability in the squat. It's the same thing when it comes to let's say your front relaxed pose right a little bit different position with your hips your waist is going to look a little bit narrower you know you go for that vacuum as opposed to bracing down with your abs you can see how it changes the angle of your lats how that changes your whole shape and lines and flow all that stuff to me is incredibly interesting incredibly fun and the best part is posing isn't going to wear you out, right? It, it's tough. You got to build up that cardiovascular capacity, but it's not going to impact your recovery significantly. So I can get away with doing an hour a day, grinding on this, improving every single time, and still be able to train with, with as much intensity as I need to, to produce the results that I want. So that's part one. That's the training. Part two is the diet and cardio, which is just as important when it comes to bodybuilding. When it comes to powerlifting, obviously not that important, but it's a whole different story in this game. So let's start with diet because that's really simple. If you guys have followed John at all, you know kind of his basic philosophies to dieting, so I'm not going to rehash those. If not, go check out his site, mountaindogtraining.com or mountaindogdiet.com, excuse me. The big changes we've made, right, since beginning prep, we've dropped roughly about a 1,000 calories. If you guys remember on my training days when we were trying to gain a little bit of size, I was getting about 4,500 calories a day. We've dropped that to about 3,500 calories a day. Now, a 1,000 calorie drop sounds like a lot, but you have to remember I was getting upwards of 100 grams of carbs during my training while we were trying to increase in size. That is actually extraordinarily uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. You get incredible pumps, but they actually can be debilitating, right? You get such a pump in your lower back that you can't really focus on your training enough. So we've cut that down to 30 grams of carbs. I'm doing uh, a scoop and a half of granite recovery factor. So actually, I feel better during my training. My pumps are still sick, but they're not so sick that they're interfering with, with the actual work. I have plenty of energy. Uh, and I'm feeling great. And so that right there, that's a big chunk of calories, right? 70 grams of carbs, that's roughly 300 calories. And then we've trimmed in equal amounts the carbs and fat and left protein the same, all right? So even though it sounds like a lot, I was basically force feeding to get 4,500 calories in. So at 35, I feel very, very comfortable. And we've stuck at that for two weeks and I'm making, still making weekly progress. So that's really, really encouraging to me. The fact that I can be fairly lean at five and a half weeks out of the first show and still be eating so much that I have zero issues with diet, right? Because that means we have a lot of wiggle room to get really, really peeled. In terms of the cardio, we've added 40 minutes of walking on an empty stomach, first thing in the morning, and this is every day except leg day. So that's five days a week because I have two leg days. I have a heavy leg day and a pump leg day. So five days a week, we're doing that cardio. I've actually been splitting it up a little bit. I'll do 30 minutes in the morning and then 15 minutes at night, uh, you know, before my last meal of the day. That just helps me kind of unwind from my training, and that's why I do it that way. I've really, really found it to be effective. So honestly, again, walking, let's put it in the same category as posing, guys. Walking is not going to beat you up that much. So I'm doing very, very little and making fantastic progress, which is really, really cool, really, really encouraging. And it really, really makes me excited to see what, you know, the next five weeks are going to bring. Last topic I want to touch on is supplements because I know you guys are so super interested in that. Uh, so I mentioned Granite Recovery that I'm using intra workout. The other products I'm using from Granite are Premium before workouts, but only when I need a kick because it's, it's a pretty serious kick. Uh, otherwise, I'll just do a cup of coffee and I'll be perfectly fine with that. And I'm getting plenty of pumps from the recovery, so I don't have to worry too much about that. And then I'm also doing granite joint care. I take that year round. I actually double up my dose. Uh, that's just kind of a preventive measure. Premium recovery factor, joint factor. Uh, so that really covers it for the for the granite stuff. I have you know high stem in case of emergency. I haven't busted that one out yet. Uh, and John's going to start me on the, the fat burner, 
uh, thermo burn. We're gonna start that four weeks out. I have never used a fat burner before, so it'll be interesting to see how that one works for me. All right, so we've covered diet, we've covered training. Uh, let's move on to some questions and answers that I got from you guys on Instagram, and thank you for submitting those. First question I got, why fasted cardio? Why not just whenever? Uh, I already mentioned I do kind of split it up, right? So I do some fast in the morning and some at night uh, to unwind. I just do the fast because that's what John tells me. And, you know, I've read both sides of the story, uh, the side where it's calories in, calories out, the side where, you know, you have the, the differences in hormonal levels. I don't know the answer whether fasted cardio is essential or not. I actually enjoy it. Uh, you know, first thing in the morning, roll out of bed. It's still kind of cool out. It's summer here in Virginia. And, uh, so it's, it's a nice way to wake up. But I'm, I, I don't have a great answer for, you know, is fasted cardio necessary or not. Second question, what are the biggest differences between your diet for bodybuilding and your diet for powerlifting? I am actually eating significantly more, right, training for bodybuilding, which is because I'm doing so much more work in the gym, right? For powerlifting, I'm working up to one, maybe two top sets of a movement, and then I'm half-assing some accessories, and then I'm done. Uh, for bodybuilding, you know, my workouts are shorter. I'm spending, you know, 90 minutes max in the gym, but I am grinding every freaking second to the point where I'm drenched in sweat. I can't breathe by the end. Uh, it's it's easier, right? Because there's, there's really no stress when it comes to performance. You just got to focus on each and every rep. Uh, but at the same time, you know, in terms of physical demands, uh, I'm burning more calories, so I get to eat a lot more. In terms of food choices, John has me doing higher fats. I've mentioned many times before I don't do well with animal fats, so I've been getting most of my fats from peanut butter, uh, cashews and walnuts, avocado, whole eggs, uh, and I think those are pretty much all my fat sources. Uh, I've been doing much smaller cheat meals because I'm just not hungry. Uh, you know, I'll have a, a pint of Arctic Zero with this, which is like 200 calories, and that'll be my cheat meal. It's just, it's kind of all I want. I, I really enjoy the foods that I'm eating. I don't feel deprived at all, and so I don't really have any need to, to have that stuff. Um, higher supplement use, I really don't use any supplements for, uh, for powerlifting, uh, except for pre-workout and creatine. Uh, so I've dropped the creatine. Excuse me, man. These sneezes are the worst. I can feel it. <coughs> My sneezes have gained more than anything else. Uh, third question. Do you weigh and measure your food cooked or uncooked? Uh, this is a great question. I vary it for my carbs. I do uncooked. Uh, for my fats, I don't really cook my fats because, like I mentioned, I don't do animal fats. And then for my protein, I do cooked because it's gross to measure out raw meat. And it does not matter whether you measure cooked or uncooked. What matters is that you're consistent with it, right? So if you're always measuring out six ounces of uncooked chicken and then all of a sudden you measure out six ounces of cooked chicken, well, you're probably getting about 20, 25% more because a lot of that weight is water that's lost during the cooking process. So you gotta be consistent from day to day, week to week, month to month, but whichever one you choose doesn't matter, just go with whatever's more convenient. Pretty easy one, right? And then the last question, what's your solution to muscular imbalances? This is a great question too. Uh, my biggest muscular imbalances are that my shoulders and triceps are lagging behind pretty much all my other muscle groups. So my solution for those, uh, first of all, start training them because I didn't really train them directly at all for powerlifting. Second of all, for triceps in particular, I've added extra workouts. I've talked about these a lot on the Lead FTS, so go check out my blog page if you haven't already. But basically what I'm doing is after my push workouts, right, twice a week, at night before I go to bed, I'm doing three sets of 100 reps on banded kickbacks. Uh, these are super easy. They are not taking anything out of my recovery, but I get a sick pump in my arms. It's really been helping that mind-muscle connection. It's increasing my volume a little bit. It makes me feel good. You know, again, I like to get that movement. It helps me relax a little bit before bed. And I've really, really enjoyed this method. So that's my plan. I just want to focus on triceps for now. And then I'll bring up, focus on bringing up my shoulders, chest, and triceps, and maybe even lats a little bit after the show is over. Uh, you know, depending on what my goals are. Uh, I, I still, I'm putting off that decision on after you finish North Americans, right? Let's say Jay Cutler goes well, you win your weight class or your height class, uh, you, you qualify for North Americans. What's after that? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not done with powerlifting, but I'm not sure I'll go back to it immediately. If I really love competing, then I'll probably do another bodybuilding show and just keep pushing until I get that pro card. 
If I don't love it, maybe I'll alternate back and forth. If I absolutely hate it, maybe I'll say, screw it. It's back to powerlifting forever. I'm really putting that decision off and just focusing on John's advice one hour at a time, one meal at a time, one training session at a time. Just do the next thing that's going to make you better right now. And that's been really, really helpful for me. Uh, I've mentioned before, you know, I have a lot of training anxiety or anxiety related around training. So this has been a really helpful method to just keep me calm, keep me in the zone. You know, it helps that I'm making so much progress and it's just still easy right now. I'm sure it's going to get a lot harder as we go. But for now, I'm feeling great. I'm going to keep killing it. And I hope you do too. So until next time, make sure you think strong and train hard.